Uh, she really has a true uh, mentality of contribution. She wants to help people become better in in uh, not just their life, but also in their, their wellness. And this has been her passion for so many years. Uh, she's a genetic expert and uh, a chief genomic officer. Well, that just means she's super smart. So I'm just open to learning from her. And this is her expertise. And uh, to learn from her and learn what she's actually been able to do, a doctor of osteopathic medicine. Um, she tests, you know, genome. Um, specializing in, in nutrigenetics medicine. So this is really her field. This is what she does uh, in her expertise. So she just tests genome sequencing based on the most important nutri uh, uh, nutritional pathways and analyzes biochemical uh, pathways to help support optimal health and wellness. So we're so fortunate to have her here to really get into depth of what we have available and how we're impacting people's lives on a larger scale. So. Dr. Jim Myers, they all the way. They have a little tidbit of your your journey of, of growth within faith. It's so remarkable because uh, to learn all of these things. We just want to soak up your knowledge and, and understand really. So uh, we actually had an event on Thursday evening with Dr. Jen, and, and she went into great detail about her immunity. Talk about you know, how that we're you know pre predisposed to certain things, we inherit certain things, it doesn't matter, uh, these are the cards you've been dealt. And to be able to take the nutritional uh, aspect to be able to help offboard some of these negative effects that could be detrimental to our life, but given an opportunity to create true health and give longevity, that's just magnificent to me. So, Dr. Jen, do you want to just start with just some of the things and why you're passionate about this, What, why you chose this path, and kind of maybe a little bit of your journey of, of what you've done over the last few years to uh, break free, uh, to just uh, discover some of these new ways of understanding our health and wellness. Oh, it's been, oh, it's been amazing. Um, it's been amazing and it's been frustrating at times, uh, you know, when, when you have certain people that challenge you or certain people that, that don't believe in what you're doing. Um, and, and, and people that tell you you're it, you know, you're, what you're doing is, is, is not going to be what, what the future of medicine is and where, where the future, what the future holds and you know better than that. Uh, so it, it, there's been frustrating times, but I'm kind of stubborn and luckily I am. Uh, and, and I get to the point where I know what I want and I know what feels right. And I know that when I was in Western medicine, I, I just, um, I loved what I did. Obstetrics and gynecology is, that's right. Uh, this is a very appropriate group to have this sign, so that's why I keep it here for you guys. Plus, it is in my office because it's true, right? You have to, you can't do epic shit with basic people, and that's no, that's not offending anybody. That's not what I mean, but that's saying that there's, 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 there's people who are comfortable in a mediocre lifestyle, and that's okay. I'm not one of them. And I don't think either one, any of you were one of them either, or else you wouldn't be here, right? I'm not, I'm not the type who's going to take mediocre vitamins and supplements and go to a mediocre doctor and, and live a, uh, you know, mediocre life and, and, and not full of adventure and excitement and a little rebellion and a little bit of, of understanding of how I feel and awareness. And, and, and for me, that's that's what I mean by by basic. I don't mean that vanilla. You know, as a lot of people say, I don't mean Starbucks people, as my daughter would say, that that's so basic. Uh, what it means is is I don't want to live a life of mediocrity, and and I think that's what pulled me away from from biomedicine. I still have a love for it. I mean, biomedicine, biochemistry. That's that's what my one of my degrees is in is is biochemistry. So of course I understand it. I, I appreciate it. I love it. I respect it. We need it. It's how I built where I am today is by starting at that point, right? So it's it's not a slam towards Western medicine at all. It, it was a it was a stepping stone for me though. It allowed me to realize that we are not pieces of an individual. We are a whole person. And to understand how we work as a whole, we really do have to understand the biochemistry of the body, the genetics, uh, the, the blood, the serum, the GI, the brain, every single piece of us. Uh, and try to bring it together as much as we can. And it's, it's tough. I tell you what, it's tough, but I love it. Uh, so for me, coming here has been um, incredible. <laughs> 
to put it that way, right? How does somebody get to wake up every morning and do what they love to do with people who are passionate about it as well and be surrounded by that 24-7? How many people actually get to do that? All of you do, I would say, right? It's amazing. There's not a single day where I wake up and, and you know what? It, it's like I always tell my girls, you can wake up and be whoever you want that day. But when you get to wake up every day and not want to be anyone except for who you really are, that's incredible. That's Absolutely. Incredible. So that, that, that's I get to wake up every day and nerd out on genetics and biochemical pathways, and I freaking love it. So uh, I can't imagine myself not doing this, to be honest. Well, honestly, we need more nerds like you in the world to help us become better people, you know, to achieve better health and wellness and greatness. If you'd be open to that, would you share a little bit of, of why we're introducing this type of product to the market today and the benefits of really what uh, uh, nutrition is actually providing for the masses today? Oh, of course, because, you know, it's like I've always said, we can we can hear from our doctor, hear from our friends, hear from ever that, that certain vitamins and minerals are good for us, right? So taking magnesium can help you sleep and help your muscles not uh, twitch and, and not have leg cramps. And if you take zinc, it'll help your immune system. And if you take vitamin C and D, it'll do the same. Uh, taking vitamin A will help your eyes, E will help your skin. You know, we know these things, but we don't know how much, right? We don't know the form. We don't know what's going to be best for, for our bodies individually and on an individual basis. I didn't know that for the longest time. Um, and I don't think anybody does. And how, how could we? The Human Genome Project opened up this huge realm for us nerds who love uh, genetics, right? It, it gave us the understanding that, wait a minute, there is a particular link. Obviously, we know to genetics and disease, but what about genetics and health? Whoever thought about combining those two? Yeah, we know we're predisposed to different things. Uh, just, to, just to piggyback on Kyle, it's my mom is 60 years old and started having early signs of dementia in her 50s, her 50s. This is a personal trainer, a woman who has been healthy the majority of her life, who has exercised and eaten healthy foods. I remember growing up as a kid, man, to have any kind of sugar or sweets or anything in the house, boy, we would, we'd have to, we'd have to uh, turn up my volume, sorry. I might have to scream, guys, I'm sorry. Um, but to be able to have sweets in the house, we would have to sneak them in, you know, <laughs> which my kids have probably done as well. Um, but because my mom was really healthy the majority of her life, but yet here she is still suffering from dementia in her 50s. And I went, absolutely not. I don't want that to happen to me. How do I prevent that? Can I prevent that? You know, and, and, and so that kind of started a little bit of my genetic journey as well as other things. Um, and I, I realized, you know what, we, we can never be 100%, 100% of the time, right? We just can't. And we shouldn't. We should indulge. We should enjoy, right? We, we definitely should. But if we understand where our genetic predispositions and weaknesses are, we can support them. And this is what we're here doing, right? We're understanding, we're, we're acknowledging, we're giving power back in our hands to say, hey, that's okay. I'm going to use this as a tool. I'm going to now recognize that there are some weaknesses. We all have them. And now I can come in and support them. Nutrigenetics is getting bigger and bigger. Whenever I go to A4M, IFM, any of those medical conventions um, and, and either speak or just am there to learn, because like I said, your doctor should never stop learning, genetics is brought up constantly. But you know what the problem is? They're talking about a SNP, a SNP, a SNP, a SNP. Do you see how here with Euphoria, we're pulling together a quite a few of them. We have 18 currently, but we have quite a bit more we've obviously recognized and, and have in our database and system. But we're looking more at a language. We're looking at sequencing. We're understanding that there's more than just this one SNP. We're looking at many SNPs, and that's why we find it important to put together this it's a start, of course, this comprehensive uh, health panel to be able to look at these different biochemical pathways and these different possible predispositions so we can help the body on many different levels, not just one. And that's what I find to be important because SNPs are words. 
you're sequencing or looking at multiple of them is your language. It's your story. It tells us who you are. It's the recipe of you, right? It doesn't get any more elegant and beautiful than that. So if we can take all these different snips, show you your story, and then support it, oh, man, we're, we're crazy not to do that, right? So it's going to get bigger and bigger and better. Same with PGX. I think everybody should have pharmacogenetic testing to understand, heaven forbid, you do ever have to have a surgical procedure or do have to go on medication. It does happen, right? You know what your body is going to be most receptive to. So I, I see nutrigenetics. I see PGX testing. I see that being the future of health and wellness, absolutely, without a doubt. And if it's not, guess what? You guys are here making it that. So that's even more beautiful. So um, I think that we're going to start to hear it. We already are. We're going to start to see it. You're already in it, right? Look where you guys are. How cool is that? You're in the beginning of, of something that nobody's ever done before. I blew my mind when I heard about what we were doing here. At, I was like a little kid in a candy store. I mean, you should have seen me. I, I was practically hyperventilating with excitement to hear what we got to do here and the level that we're doing it at. Nobody else, I'm telling you right now, I've, I have looked at other companies through and through. I've, I've done all of my research. Nobody, nobody is doing it on the same level that we are. We talk about these are plant-based peer-reviewed ingredients, right? Superfoods and, and all these other things. And they're pairing these with, um, with these SNPs that are coming, these single nucleotide polymorphisms. It took me like four weeks to learn that word. But... <laughs> If you can give a quick little snip about what SNPs are, a little tidbit, what is a SNP and why they're important to address, and then these plant-based period ingredients that we're they're addressing to identify how to offward some of these negative effects that we've inherited, how are those congruent and why are we going this route versus something else? Well, because there is no other way, in my opinion. There really isn't. Uh, this is what I do in my practice. This is what I research. This is what I study. Yeah. There is no okay. other way. Okay, I had to unmute myself. Sorry, can you guys hear me better now? I feel like I'm really close. You can see no, it's perfect. We hear you absolutely clearly. Okay, so these, these SNPs, as you were asking about, or these single nucleotide polymorphisms, actually, we, of course, inherit from our, our parents, right? And, and a lot of them are just defining who we are, what we look like, um, how our build is, our, a little bit of our personality, things, things like that, right? So, um, and other ones are actionable in the sense that they show us how our biochemistry works. If you were there Thursday night, you saw that I showed that methylation process, those seven steps that it takes for, to get from dietary folic acid down to 5-methotetrahydrofolate, which is what is used by the body, what actually gets into the cell to create cellular energy to start over 250 biochemical processes. One SNP, that's one SNP. That's incredible. So to understand how these things work, how these SNPs work, right? So, so they can turn themselves on and off. And I don't want to get too deep into this, guys, but, but genes are there. They're never going to change. We never have to re-swab ourselves again. Okay, so they are there. They're, they, they're who we are. They show how we work or where our crack is in our foundation, as I like to say, and our little flaws that we have, right? We're all perfectly flawed. That's how it is. Um, and so understanding that lets someone like myself say, okay, now I can navigate through this person's body without the guesswork. I don't have to guess how somebody's going to take this particular thing that I'm going to give them, how their body's going to break it down, utilize it, absorb it, and create cellular energy and create all these processes that they need to do on a daily basis. I can navigate that through their, their with not only how they talk to me and what they tell me, but also with their genetics and their blood work and put it all together, which is incredible. So the piece that we're able to give to you at Euphoria is say, okay, obviously we still want you to follow up with a healthcare provider. Obviously we still want you to eat well. We still want you to sleep like you're supposed to. We still want you to have positive, happy mindset. Surround yourself with people that motivate you and make you feel good. Um, you know, all the, all the other things things that are that are attributing to to genetics being turned on the bad ones emotional trauma can turn on a bad snip absolutely it can we all have emotional trauma we all have the baggage right i don't think anybody can escape that and if you've been able to escape that your entire life rock on because that's pretty hard to do but having the understanding of how this works now we can then go on and say okay we, we look at these, it's biochemistry. We look at these biochemical pathways, we trace them, and we understand 
what actually supports that, the body makes a lot of the things that we have to give you, right? But a lot of it, it doesn't because it has to go from this inactive to this active. So the body has to understand how to be able to convert this on its own. It's an amazing, we're amazing self-healing mechanisms. Our bodies do incredible things to be able to take something that we don't know what to do with or how to absorb and convert it. So that way we do know how to absorb and use it and create all this energy to do everything that we do is in, is miraculous. It's incredible. The human body is beautiful. This just allows us to see where you might not have the ability to do that as strong as somebody else, whether it's at a 50% because you only got a copy from one parent or 100% or even closer to 100% because you got a copy from both parents. So certain biochemical pathways we have to support, like methylation. We absolutely have to support methylation. People think if they're happy and they live a good lifestyle and they eat the way that they're supposed to and they, they take all these folate-rich or folic acid-rich foods that they're going to be just fine, and that's not the case. So that's those aren't, if, I, if you remember those steps, those aren't the active forms or the active ways that, that our body absorbs and uses it. It still has to go through the process. So if we don't have the ability to do that, we have to trick the system, essentially. It's like tricking our kids, you know, and putting something on their plate that they don't, we think, you know, oh, they're not going to know what this is. And, you, you know, try to trick them. I do that all the time. Sorry, I'm, my, my children are probably going to come busting in here. What do you mean? <laughs> Close your ears. <laughs> girls. You put the, uh, the unhealthy mac and cheese box on the counter, but actually you made it yourself with gluten-free uh, gluten noodles and, you know, dairy-free cheese or whatever I have to do, right? So... But we're tricking the system essentially is what we're doing. So you're able, we're able now to go in and understand here's the weakness, let's trick the system. And that's okay. It's okay to trick the system to be able to have it do what we want to do. So I think that we're going to start, uh, you know, you guys know I like to diverse a little bit, but we're going to start to see this more mainstream. If we haven't already, there's a lot of people that understand that there's a better way. People are sick. People are tired of being sick. People are tired of taking medications. They're tired of taking medications that don't work for them or that work for them but cause another side effect, so they have to take something else to counteract that. They're not getting any better. Once they stop taking their medication, they're back to being sick again. So they want to be healthy. This is a start to that, right? It, it implements a, a healthy lifestyle. It makes them understand and become more aware of how their body works and functions. To me, that's huge. Awareness is huge. When we understand that we do have some of these weaknesses, we start taking something to support it and we go, hey, you know what? I am sleeping a little bit better and that's what I want to see sustainable things, right? You, you, we're not going to change overnight and be a new person. If a patient comes in to me after, after a week and says, I'm a new person, I'm like, oh, well, crap, that's not going to last because their body's going to find its new norm. And then they're going to think it's not working anymore. And that's not the case. We want sustainable results, right? You know what? I notice I don't have to take a two o'clock nap anymore. I notice I, I feel a little bit more refreshed when I wake up. Like, okay, I, I think I can, I have a little more energy throughout the day. And, and with my exercising, I don't fatigue really. That's the stuff we want to start seeing. And that's the stuff over time as our body and our biochemistry starts to go, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. That's when we start to see miraculous results. And that's when we start to feel better. For me to be able to go 24-7 the way that I do, if I had never discovered genetics, noticed my weaknesses and came in and started supporting them, I don't think I'd be able to do this. And that's pretty sad because I like doing this. Can you explain just real briefly about methylation? I know that word has come up a few times. Just a brief little snaps of what that is and why it's so important. Yeah. It's super important, right? So methylation on Thursday night is our gasoline. It's what puts energy into the cell. It prefaces things like our RNA and our DNA and our immune system, growth hormone for children as well. That's why it's kind of, we, we want to start being able to, to test our kids, right? So, so we have all that available. We just have to get it in the works. So shh. Um, but, but it prefaces all these different things, our mitochondria, which is our powerhouse, right? So if we don't have this cellular energy to begin with, Let's say we go through this methylation process and we have both MTHFRs, right? Let's say you have them both at a red. You have two reds on your MTHFRs. Do you realize that you have a 70% uh, decrease in efficacy on how you can get cellular energy? So when I talk to people about that, I'm like, think about running on less than a half a tank of gas every single day. 
every single day. Some days you do quite well and you can actually make it through. Most days though, you fall and, and kind of feel like, gosh, it's two, three, four, whatever time that is, and I'm exhausted. That's the way most people work. And that's because their methylation process does not work as well as it should. There's probably other cofactors involved, absolutely. But methylation is what puts energy into the cell so we can start doing all those different processes. In fact, like I said, it's over 250 biochemical processes. So that's kind of a big deal. So we want to make sure that we can take these unmethylated B vitamins, right? So like folic acid and, and cyanocobalamin and all these different types of B vitamins that, that aren't absorbed and put into the cell like they're supposed to and want to give the methylated form like methylcobalamin and the quatrifolic or the 5-methotetrahydrofolate. Make sure we give these properly um, uh, in the proper amount and in the proper form so our body knows, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do with this. Okay, I don't have to convert it because I don't really know how to do that. So thank you for giving me what I need. Like I said, euphoria gives your body a voice. It, it understands what your body needs. These genetic tests, I'm not saying just euphoria, there's lots of companies out there, but then when we come in and say, aha, we're going to take it one step further and give you the solution as well. So methylation is your gasoline, your cellular energy. I just told you how to build the watch when you told me what time it was in case you were wondering. I'm good at that. That is amazing. I love it. Now, I think a lot of people, I, I have friends that say, look, I just take blood tests. And I just, you know, I want to take a blood test versus a DNA test because it's quote unquote more accurate, so on and so forth. So can you address that the difference between a blood test and a DNA test and, and, and how they, they function differently? Thank goodness you said that and brought that up, right? So think about a vitamin B12 test. Let's, let's go with that. So we go with a B12 test and their B12 level is, um, is low. Well, we understand, oh, I don't take vitamin B12. So we understand the body needs B12, right? So what do you do? you take B12. So let's say somebody decides I'm going to go take cyanocobalamin or you go to your regular doctor and they give you the injections. Well, cyanocobalamin is cheap and it's easy. So that's usually what they get. So you get these injections or you're taking it, you know, sublingually or whatever you're doing on a daily basis, you get your blood checked again and the level's high in your blood work. And the doctor goes, oh, wait, you're taking too much. Let's back you off. No, you know what's happening is it's in the bloodstream. It's not in the cell where it belongs. If you take the right form and the right amount, your B12 level will stay normal on your blood work because you're not getting excess into the blood. You're getting what you need into the cell and your body's using it appropriately. So when somebody has high B12 levels and they're taking, you know, B12 shots and doing, or, or, like I tell some patients, they go, they take their nutrition and they go right to the lab and they have their blood work done. Sometimes the, the body's doing what it's supposed to do. So it is going to show a little bit high in the bloodstream at the time. So sometimes you have to do what we call fast and not take your vitamins and see where your levels are at. So just because it shows that it's high in your bloodstream, it doesn't mean that, that you're taking too much. Okay. So remember that. Vitamin D is a little bit different. If it's a little bit high, either you just took it, so it's in your bloodstream and it's showing high, or you are taking too much in that sense, which we usually don't see unless somebody takes a whole bunch. I think one guy was taking 50,000 IUs a day, which is a lot, and that's when it was high in his blood. Um, so just because your blood shows, that's a snapshot, like I was saying on Thursday, that doesn't show your blueprint. That doesn't show how you metabolize it. It just shows what's in your bloodstream at that exact moment, that exact time of day, that's what it shows. And it doesn't show how it's absorbed or even if it's absorbed. Well, that's so powerful. It's so important to understand the difference that our blueprint, what we're born with and what we can address and deal with, and then giving the solution to that is massive. So I love that. Thank you so much. If, if you look at a lot of people, I think, think that they, they can just take a vitamin, right? I'm just going to take the multivitamin and I'm fine. Like, what, what's the difference between taking a multivitamin and something that's truly customized to you and your DNA? I mean, what? just show us a little bit of difference of that. So a multivitamin, they put a whole bunch of different things in there. And a lot of times to make it uh, not, not super expensive, right? So they'll put a, a little bit, and they never usually go to 100% RDA. Some of them they do. On, on some of them, you see that it's 100 or even over 100% RDA. 
but a lot of times it's under that, right? Because they're in hopes that your body's going to be able to absorb these things. So taking a big multivitamin where you've got all your vitamins and minerals, you have to watch, are they methylated? Are they the right form? Are you taking one with CoQ10 in it or ubiquinone and you need ubiquinol or vice versa? I actually pull all my patients off multivitamins. Stop taking your multivitamin. Most of the time you have expensive urine with that, unfortunately, and you don't absorb it the way that you're supposed to. So this is actually letting us be a little bit more exact and a little bit more precise based on what your body needs and being able to balance the dosage and the amount as well. So that to me is pretty darn powerful. And it's not just you're taking the same thing as everybody. Why should you take the same thing as everybody? Well, Kyle's not going to be the same as me in metabolizing and detoxing and absorbing and utilizing these different vitamins and minerals. He needs to take them differently than I do. Same with Jenny. I'm looking at names. Same with Polly. Everybody needs to take them differently. And that's okay. That's actually amazing. So we don't have to sit there and go, okay, we're all taking the same thing. It's going to work for a couple people, but it's not going to work for everybody. So why be like everyone else when you can be like you and take what you need? To me, that's more powerful, right? The things that are there, if you're pregnant, like would, would you be concerned about taking this product if you're pregnant? Maybe address those two things real quick. Yes. So this is delicate, of course, as we know. Um, I always tell people who are, um, have I put pregnant women up? Yes, I have. Do I address DNA when they're pregnant? Absolutely. Holy crap. That's the, one of the best times to do it, right? They're supporting fetal development. So that's huge that mom gets what she needs because she's going to have to then feed this, this growing little uh, fetus inside of her and make sure that it gets everything it needs on top of it. However, I do tell people who are not my patients with any euphoria, please consult your obstetrician. Uh, make sure that they see what you're taking and that, you know, will they all understand it? Oh, maybe not. And I'm, I'm sorry about that, but um, it still should be looked at. We've had a lot of women within the Euphoria program that went through their pregnancy and, and took nutrition. And I heard some great things. I heard one of them say that it was the easiest delivery she's ever had. Her recovery was great. Um, and, and, and she felt more energetic afterwards because well, here's the thing, you have a baby, you exert a lot of energy, of course, right? Even if it's a C-section, that's a trauma, that's still exerting a lot of energy, no matter how that is. You lose a lot of blood both ways. There's a lot that happens to mom, and they send you home, and here you are depleted and exhausted, and your body has just been through some trauma, and now you're expected to be 24-7 on with this adorable little child who needs you. And then if you're nursing, I mean, oh my gosh, so this has been great for a lot of pregnant women uh, and nursing moms as well. However, I do recommend that you still uh, uh, speak with your obstetrician and, and make sure that they understand at least what you're taking. Uh, may want to address that in that perspective where, you know, am I going to be shown what I have, to, uh, what I'm predisposed to in regards to maybe some diseases and or allergies? So no, it's not going to show. There are genes that show different um, uh allergies as well. We can see if there's a lactose problem, if there's a gluten problem, we can see those things, yes, with certain SNPs. However, what this shows me and what I tell people is I'm going to pretty much kind of treat you the same because I'm going to look at your inflammatory and your immune SNPs, right? So your IL-6, uh, your CR CRP, and your TNF-alpha. Uh, I'm going to look at those and a person who has yellow and red and one two or even three of those is going to be more prone to different allergic type of reactions in the body right because they have this aggressive immune and inflammatory response so like i was saying on thursday night those are the people that get a bug bite and instead of it just being a little bug bite and going away it blows up into something huge that's exactly what happens to the inside of their bodies when they eat something that their body's either one allergic or intolerant to so it's not going to make them feel very good, right? So it's not going to show me exactly if you're allergic to, um, to peanuts or if you're allergic to gluten, but it's going to give me an idea that, hey, I'm going to start asking you those questions. And maybe you as a person with, the, with euphoria can say, is there something, I do have a lot of reds and yellows here. Is there something that I notice that bothers me or that I'm intolerant to? What this product is going to do is help restore a healthy immune and inflammatory response and not an aggressive one. It's not going to get rid of allergies uh, per se, but it might 
teach our bodies to react a little bit differently. Um, I'm not saying that if you've been allergic to peanuts, if you take this product, go eat a peanut, please, Lord, don't do that. Make sure you still get testing and follow-ups done with that as well. But what it's going to do is help the body create more of a healthy immune response and inflammatory response and not an aggressive one, which is what happens during the what are your thoughts in regards to the amount of taking certain things in regards to the, uh, the, the clinical doses that we're receiving currently? Great. So just make sure that that's the awareness factor, right? That I, that I always tell patients, like, when you become aware of how your body feels uh, when it's exposed to different things, and that is even vitamins and minerals, that's powerful. So if you notice that, you know what, I can take all 10 of these in the morning, and I am just fine. I don't have any nausea. It doesn't upset my stomach. Some people have to take them in smaller amounts because they hypermethylate things, right? So, and that's okay. We're giving the body what it needs, but you might have to take it in a smaller amount. Completely normal that that's the case. You're going to notice there's what we call hypomethylators, which people that takes them a long time to go through a specific, like they can take, you know, eight Advil and be fine. I pop one and I'm out for like 24 hours. So everybody's different. So it's the same sense in that. I'm not going to go pop eight Advil and think that I'm going to be okay because I'm not. So if you have to take five and five, if you have to take three, three, you know what I mean? However, however you have to take it for you, that's the awareness factor that I love. And that puts power in your hands to understand how your body feels best when you take um, your certain amounts of nutrition throughout the day, whether it's at one time or you have to split it up. Anything you want to add on to that to talk about just overall wellness and how important it is to address it right off? Oh, man. I mean, it's, of course, as you said, it, it seems so common sense, like, right? It seems like, well, why wouldn't I want to take what my body needs in the right amount, in the right form, at the right time for me? Why, why wouldn't I want to do that? Um, well, <laughs> to put it, I'm going to read something that, that I ended up, and I, I sent it to Kyle, and, and I wanted to, um, I kind of wanted to read this. To me, this kind of sums it up a little bit, and you're welcome, guys. I see what you're saying in, in the chats, and I'm sorry if I didn't get to your questions, because um, there are so many of them. You guys know that I adore you all and I adore being here and I love to hear your stories. It's one of my favorite things. Whenever we have events, I lose like five pounds. I don't sleep. I lose my voice when I come home because all I want to do is stand there and listen to your stories uh, and talk to you all. So, so I tend to, to kill myself sometimes in that process. <laughs> Got to take care of yourself too, right? Um, so something I wrote that was a uh, uh, I think it's through PBS is, is they published it during this whole uh, pandemic and talking about the importance of customized DNA supplementation on the immune system. I'm sorry if I have to read. I, it's been a while, so I'm going to go ahead and, and read it off to you. So customized DNA nutrition can help support and restore a healthy immune and inflammatory response. We have genes that turn on the innate immune system and genes that turn it off. Understanding what that elegant process looks like for each individual allows for better support on a biochemical and intracellular level. If they have an aggressive immune response, we have that understanding and can respond accordingly to these possible exogenous threats, such as virus, bacteria, uh, trauma, etc. We can eliminate the guesswork out of the complex biochemical pathways, allowing for healthy immune and inflammatory response with the proper nutrients per individual need. This is evidence-based, highly researched approach to our overall health and wellness. To me, that sums it up pretty much why we do this, why I do this. Uh, I said those three favorite words that I like, enhancing recovery potential. We're enhancing how your body recovers from all the different things that it's exposed to on a daily basis. We can't help with this pandemic going on if we're gonna be exposed to this virus, but damn it, we can help how our body's gonna to respond to that by making sure that we're doing everything in our power, exercising, eating right, hydrating with half of our weight in ounces of water every day, sleeping appropriately, having healthy relationships. It's a stressful time, I get it. Finding those stress relievers, going out for a walk as much as you can, taking the proper nutrients for your body to help restore that healthy immune and inflammatory response to help your body detox from all these exogenous threats. All you're doing is a portion by taking this and another piece to the puzzle 
of helping support your overall health and wellness. That's what you're doing to be able to enhance your recovery potential. That's huge. So it, it is a piece of that. There is a lot of other parts that come involved in it, but man, it's, it's a darn good piece. There's no, you don't have to guess. You don't have to wonder if what you're taking is what your body needs because we're telling you that because your body told us that because we got to do the research. We got to investigate the SNPs. We were able to look into the biochemical pathways and understand them because that's what we love to do. The people who were involved on the science team and who are behind this. So we love doing our job. Let us do our job. We think it's the best thing in the world. I eat, sleep, and and what and live for this. This is this is not just my passion. This is my obsession. This is my this is what I what I was here. This is why I was here. This is why I was brought here is to do these things. Um, because I understand that I feel better now than I've ever felt in my entire life. Did it take time to get here? Absolutely it did. Am I scared? If I ever contract this virus that I'm gonna get sick and die, you know what, I'm not. Um, because I'm doing everything in my power to take uh, as best care as I can. Obviously, we wanna make sure that, that everybody still stays safe and healthy, of course. Um, I might sound a little cocky when I talk about my health and wellness. Do I still get sick? Yeah, I do every once in a while, absolutely. But it's very minimal and I get over it quick. That's what we want, we wanna enhance your recovery potential. So just remember those three words, if anything, guys, just remember that you're just taking another little piece every single day of being able to enhance your recovery potential and support your overall health and wellness. That's the best message I can leave for you guys. Building our, build, our building blocks of our health is really what we're doing. This is your purpose, your passion. This is what you live for. And we're so grateful for your knowledge and your willingness to share your knowledge with us and you've been such a blessing to everybody here not just in this call but really globally because we're we're here to share this with the world and so dr jen thank you so much there, there was one last thing i just want to make sure that everybody knows that if they ever choose to to do this if they ever choose to to get the product that their identity their information is safe now we have clear certified hipaa compliant uh nsf certified now this nsf certification i think is really important too how safe are people's um information in regards to you know sh you know giving their dna uh to a company to do this type of a process well your dna is your most personal piece of information right so um i can be honest with you i would have never have joined on to this science team if i thought that that was going to be compromised in any way shape or form um i looked at many different companies uh, I've used different companies in the past, or a different company, one that I found in the past with my patients uh, because I trusted and I knew that everything was kept in house. We are CLIA CAP certified. We are HIPAA compliant, which means that your information is protected. It is yours, right? It's your most personal thing ever is your DNA. It doesn't get more personal than that. So it has to be protected. Um, do we, will we use it for in-house research? We may, and that's awesome, but we will make sure that you know that, that you are aware if we ever do that and, and you're welcome to give us the thumbs up or thumbs down. I hope you give us a thumbs up because then I get to weed through it and try to find new stuff and, and integrate and, and, and progress with the science as of course we want to, but to sell your information to a third party, thank you, Ruth, uh, absolutely not. Uh, this is our software. We own it. We own the algorithm. Link Biosciences, excuse me, does, uh, which I am a part of that. So I guess I can say we, um, but we are not going to use your information for whatever we want to at our pleasure or our leisure um, or let somebody tap into that. So the NSF certification means uh, that all of the ingredients within this product have been tested thoroughly and can be used with uh, our sports athletes without showing that they are um, cheating, I guess, is what they kind of look for, are these ingredients that are enhancing their, yeah, you know what, it is going to enhance their energy, right? I hope it's going to work on their performance, but it's not performance altering in the sense of uh, taking those things that, uh, um, you know, I don't even remember what they used, whatever enhances testosterone, steroids, and things like that, but um, it is safe for our athletes to use uh, all the uh, products involved. We do a vigorous interview 
I'm included in this on all of our ingredient companies. I want to see their C of A's, which is their certificate of analysis to make sure that everything they're using from the extraction process uh, to the binding process to whatever it, it needs to be and needs to be done is done the right way. I have turned down a company for an ingredient that I wanted so desperately in this product because they used a carrier that was non-GMO our bodies don't know what to do with that, right? So, so there is a process that goes along with it. If we are not happy, it will not go in there. Because this, again, this is DNA, this is genetics. If your body doesn't know what to do with it, what's the point we defeat our purpose? So um, yes, we are gonna keep your information solid. Yes, we're gonna continue to progress and innovate as science does as well. Yes, we're gonna still be sticklers and make sure we have that thick interview process for anything that we're going to use in our product. And uh, we're going to see a lot of new things, and, and, and some of them are going to be very exciting. So um, stick around. We just begun. We've just begun. I know that sounds so crazy, but we've literally just begun. And I tell you what, I have been doing a lot of research over the years, and I have so much that I want to bring to the table as well. So um, yeah, just to stick around. So blessed to have you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jen, for being here. We, we are, this is a rare occasion that we have Jen here, Dr. Jen, to be able to share these types of things. Hopefully, we'll be able to do this here in the near future to, to readdress some of the things that people really want to know about. But goodness gracious, you have been a, just a godsend. So thank you so much for everything you do, Dr. Jen. Um, and we'll do this again here soon. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. You guys are a rock star team, and I adore each and every one of you. So if I don't happen to see your faces, through this again uh hopefully come august i'll be able to see you all in vegas and, and hopefully we'll be able to go right my goodness uh so stay safe stay healthy and uh share this you guys are an extension of me so please share this with everybody <laughs>